Let's start. In fact, with our second speaker, uh, Francesca Pistilli from the Department of Electronics and Telecommunications. She will give us a speech entitled Point Cloud Denoising with Graph Convolutional Neural Networks. Francesca received the Bachelor of Science degree in Electronic Engineering from Politecnico di Torino in 2017. After she was enrolled in a double degree program between the Politecnico di Torino and the University of Illinois at Chicago. And uh, she received the Master of Science degrees in Electronic Engineering from Polytechnic di Torino and in Electrical and Computer Engineering from the University of Illinois at Chicago in 2019 and 2020, respectively. She is currently a PhD student at the Image Processing and Learning Group uh, under the supervision of Professor Enrico Magli and Diego Alsesi at Polytechnic di Torino. Her current research interests include deep learning applied to image and point cloud processing. Francesca, uh, it is your turn. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you, Gianni. Uh, so uh, today I'm going to talk uh, about one of the topics of my PhD research. Uh, that is about uh, point cloud denoising. Um, so first of all, I would like to give a brief introduction about point clouds, uh, which type of data they are, and in which applications they can be involved. Uh, so point clouds are a geometric data type uh, that consists in an unordered set of two-dimensional points that may represent objects or scenes. Uh, point clouds can be involved in many applications. Uh, for instance, uh, in autonomous driving, uh, two-dimensional point clouds uh, are exploited to detect objects and their specific position in the space, uh, and also to create a three-dimensional uh, map uh, of the surrounding environment uh, to uh, for use for uh, path uh, prediction. Furthermore, uh, in medical imaging, uh, three-dimensional techniques uh, has gained attention due to the availability of instrument uh, and sensor that uh, can um, collect point clouds and that are able to provide uh, realistic representations of anatomic models. Furthermore, point clouds can be involved in um, virtual and augmented reality. Uh, due to their ability uh, to provide uh, reliable representations of the real world. Uh, those are just few of the many uh, applications that point clouds can have. One of the biggest limitations of point clouds uh, is uh, that uh, all the acquisition methods are imperfect and they insert a non-negligible amount of noise. As we said before, a point cloud is a set of points uh, in the three-dimensional space to which is associated a specific location. The amount of noise actually uh, changes uh, the, um, uh, the, the, the specific location and therefore the collected shape is different from the original one. Uh, therefore, um, in case of safety critical applications uh, such as autonomous driving, it is particularly important uh, to perform a denoising of point clouds in order to reconstruct the original shape. In literature, there are several methods that address point cloud denoising. Traditional methods such as surface fitting or spicity based techniques uh, are focused on optimizing local models to fit the surface to the noisy data or to exploit some geometrical features such as uh, surface normals. These methods are able to obtain good results when the amount of noise is limited. Instead, when the, when the, um, the level of noise is increased, they obtain poor denoising performance because the input data is too noisy to have a good uh, surface estimation. Another important class of traditional methods is derived from the graph theory. Uh, these methods first define a graph upon the noisy data and then apply some graph total, var uh, graph total variation uh, regularization methods. Uh, these methods obtain very good results at low level of noise actually overcoming the other traditional methods. But again, when the amount of noise is increased, uh, the graph construction became unstable, and this leads to a decreasing of the performance. Recently, uh, in general, learning-based techniques has gained attention due to the remarkable results obtained by deep, uh, deep neural network, and in particular by convolutional neural network. However, the extension of deep learning techniques to point clouds is not straightforward. 
due to the fact that pollen clouds lie on irregular domains, so they cannot be represented in a regular structure like images can be represented by grids, and for the permutation invariance problem. That means that in any way the points are sorted, they will always represent the same shape. The first neural network able to efficiently deal with point cloud is PointNet, a network of point cloud classification. This network will process each point independently, um, applying some uh, one by one convolution, and then uh, aggregate the points together using some global operation. This network is limited because it is not able to uh, actually uh, compute a convolutional operation and therefore it is not able to build hierarchical features and it's not able to exploit a local structure of a neighborhood. Uh, this network has been recently extended to the point cloud denoising task uh, with a network point cleanet. Uh, this network is able to predict the correction vector of each point of a point cloud. The architecture of PointCleanNet is directly derived from PointNet, but it introduces, uh, uh, introduces uh, a novelty. Uh, in fact, it is able to um, exploit a local structure of the neighborhood using a trick. Uh, it takes uh, as input not the entire point cloud, but just a patch of points. But it has to be mentioned that um, this network having as input an, uh, a patch of points, it is able to estimate the um, correction vector just of the center point of the patch. Uh, and still this network, again, it is not actually able to, um, co uh, to compute a classic convolutional operation. Recently, uh, graph convolutional neural networks has gained attention because uh, they, are a prom they, they provide a promising approach to deal with irregular domains and orderless data. Uh, recently, uh, graph convolutional neural networks has been applied to some point cloud processing tasks, such as a classification and segmentation. Therefore, our idea was to investigate the graph convolutional neural networks also for the point cloud denoising task. So it is a quite different task for, uh, with respect to the classification. First of all, because we are uh, dealing with noisy data that have a completely different distribution. And also because we are interested in extract more local features. Therefore, we uh, developed a fully convolutional uh, neural network for point cloud denoising. Here is reported the um, architecture of the proposed network. It is possible to see that at high level, uh, the network uh, exploited the residual, the residual learning. In fact, uh, the network do not, uh, doesn't estimate uh, directly the, the noise version of the point cloud, but it estimates uh, the additive noise. Uh, the architecture in general is divided into three main steps. Uh, first of all, the three-dimensional input, the three-dimensional noisy input, is uh, projected to a f-dimensional space where, uh, the, um, where actually the graph convolution can be computed. Uh, after that, a cascade of two residual blocks is inserted. Uh, and in each residual block, uh, a better estimation of the additive noise is provided. Uh, each residual block is constituted by three graph convolutional layers, and at the beginning of each block, the graph is computed, leading to a dynamic graph construction. Finally, uh, the additive noise that is estimated in the f-dimensional space is projected back to the three-dimensional space through a graph convolutional layer. Uh, now I would like to focus and give more detail about the graph convolutional layer that is actually the core of the, uh, of the proposed network. Uh, this graph convolutional layer implements the lightweight ECC, that is a modified version of the original edge condition and convolution that introduces some approximations uh, to limit the vanishing gradient problem and uh, to limit the computational complexity. The, the original operation uh, can be seen as a local weighted aggregation of points. In fact, uh, a new feature vector associated to a point is computed as the aggregation of the um, feature vector of the point itself and of the points in its neighborhood that is defined by the graph. At each contribution, a specific weight is associated. 
and the weights associated to the points in the neighborhood are the output of a two-layer multilayer perceptor. This uh, a uh, small inner layer uh, takes as input uh, the difference between the feature vectors of uh, the center point and uh, the, po uh, the feature vector associated to the points uh, of the neighbors that uh, we are interested in computing the weight associated with. Uh, this is particularly flexible and powerful representation because, uh, as we said before, the graph is dynamic. Therefore, the graph is not fixed a priori uh, according to the two-dimensional position of the points, but it is computed, uh, actually it, it's also updated uh, through the network, and it's computed according to the features. Therefore, the graph doesn't show uh, the, um, the closest point, but actually shows the similarity between the points. Uh, to clarify this concept, I would like to show the receptive field of, um, of a point. A receptive field is a, a set of points that actually influence uh, the, um, the, the computation of a, of a features. In this case, uh, we are looking at the second residual block of the uh, architecture showed before, and the, the output of the three graph convolutional layers are shown in the figure. We are looking at the receptive field that are the green points of the red point um, that is in the middle of the structure of the chair. Uh, the, um, the black points are the point that uh, the network actually sees and among which it is able to choose the neighbors. Uh, it is possible to see that going deeper with the network, uh, the receptive field, first of all, increases in size, but it is due to the convolutional operation. But more interesting, we can notice that uh, the points that are, that are chosen as neighbors are not the um, spatially closest points to the red point, but are actually the ones that share similarities with it, with, uh, with it, and therefore are the ones that are on the same side of the structure of the chair. Here I reported some quantitative results to just have an idea uh, on how, how are the performance of the proposed network. Uh, the performance are measured in terms of chamfer measure, that is uh, a measurement uh, that, is, that computes the uh, average distance between the denoised point cloud and the ground truth surface. The proposed network that is actually is presented into two different versions according to the loss function is able to outperform all the other state of the art. Uh, and in particular, it is able to obtain very good results at high level of noise highlighting a sort of a gap uh, in, the in the previous state uh, of the art methods. Here are also shown some qu qualitative results so just to have an idea of, how are, uh, of what are the effects of the denoising procedure. Uh, in this case, it is possible to see that uh, the proposed uh, denoised version of the point cloud is the one that, it, that better reconstructs the original shape and is the one that is able to uh, provide more accurate details. Finally, I would like to, um, uh, to present a, a last experiment in presence of simulated uh, noisy data from a LiDAR dataset. All the previous experiment and uh, therefore the trained models were uh, performed uh, um, with synthetic data and uh, the noisy data were actually obtained by manually adding uh, Gaussian noise to the clean synthetic data. Uh, this is um, a, well, a, a well used um, approximation to have the data, but it is also important to show that uh, and to validate that the, the proposed network is able also to work with more realistic type of noise. And in this experiment, uh, we uh, verify that also in this scenario, uh, the network is able to obtain a very good results. So uh, in conclusion, uh, this works actually prove the suitability of graph convolution neural networks uh, for point cloud denoising. Even if in literature there, there were already present some works uh, that involved the point cloud convolution neural networks uh, for uh, um, some point cloud processing task, they were uh, uh, with, uh, they were involved in classification and segmentation task. That is particularly different from a denoising task. Uh, first of all, because the data are uh, noisy in this case, so they have a different distribution. 
and also because we are interested in extract local features per point rather than having a global information per point cloud as in the classification task. Before we can actually say that the graph convolution neural networks uh, may be the best choice for any point cloud uh, um, processing task, uh, especially in the uh, point cloud denoising uh, uh, scenario, uh, we uh, provide significant improvements over the state of the art uh, methods, and in particular, we, we obtain very good results at high level of noise. For the extension of this uh, uh, work uh, could be certainly done. Uh, for, for instance, uh, trying to consider a more complex scenario, different type of noise, uh, uh, the presence of outliers in the point cloud, or also even more difficult to try to uh, use a realistic data set. Uh, the main difficulty on using the realistic data set is that they do not provide a ground truth. And the network, as it is proposed, uh, exploit a supervised learning. Therefore, to, to train the network, it is actually required to have a ground truth. Therefore, uh, a good extension uh, and a, a worth trying could be uh, try to extend this network also for an unsupervised uh, learning uh, scenario. So this concludes my uh, presentation. And thank you all for your attention. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you, Francesca, for your talk. Now uh, it is uh, time for questions and answer session. Well, we have a, a question in live. Is the technique advantage, in the advantages, uh, sorry, does the technique provide advantages in general or there are specific point cloud structures for which it is more uh, suitable? Uh it actually uh, can be applied to any type of point clouds so because uh, the training of the model uh, is performed by patch. So actually the network do not never see the entire point cloud. And so it is not required to have a specific shape to work well, but any patch that can be extracted for any type of uh, point cloud uh, can be used. Uh, just Anna, maybe uh, something that could be done in this sense is that the network is sensible to the distribution of the points. Mm. Uh, therefore, maybe if you have a point cloud that is very dense, and so you have the network trained for very dense point cloud, maybe the performance on a sparse uh, point cloud could not uh, perform uh, very well by scratch, but it's possible to do a small fine tuning with the more sparse data and they could obtain uh, very good results in any way. Okay, thank you. And we have another question. It is um, more general, we think. Mm -hmm. What are the future steps in uh, the development of the technique that you proposed us uh, today? The future, uh, uh, future practical steps. The future practical steps, uh, I think that the, the most interesting part should be uh, find, to, uh, find a model that could be used directly with realistic data set. Uh, so in the, as I was saying before, in the unsupervised learning scenario, uh, because I think that it's more challenging. I mean, it, it's, it's a common procedure in like uh, point cloud processing works to uh, maybe uh, do your experiment with synthetic data because they are easier and you have more data to train uh, eventually your network. But for a practical use, I think that could be very interesting to find a way also to do not have the ground truth and, and so doing uh, unsupervised learning. But in this way, you should reconsider, uh, not maybe not entirely, but pretty much the, the architecture because you need to uh, have your supervision in another way than rather than having the rather than the loss function with the ground truth. Thank you, Francesca. Uh